All right, guys. So the bottom end is complete. <clears throat> the pistons are in. Oil pan is bolted back on. Engine brace is uh, also bolted back on. Now let's get to uh, servicing this head, which I have right here. So it's on a soft pad on paper towels, so this, the uh, mating surface doesn't get uh, damaged in any way. So now what I want to do is take out these uh, shims. They're actually cups with shims installed on top. So these I'm going to put in order because the actual clearances, you know, they're important, they're valve specific. So I'm going to take all the buckets out so they don't fall out when we're flipping this head over. I'm just putting them in order. My magnetic tray over here. Alright, we got our buckets out. Now I want to take out all the exhaust valves to kind of speed up the process. We're lapping all eight of them in. And to do that, we're going to use Lyle tool number 36050. It's actually a kit. We're going to use a smaller one. And to take the, the valve keepers out, it's actually just a, an aluminum body cylinder with a hole in there which has magnets inside. So I'll show you how this works. When we put this on the valve cap and give it a tap, the keepers will actually end up in here and the spring will come out. So let's try it on cylinder number one. You'll see the cap and the keepers come right out. And then the valve spring and the valve will come out the bottom. So let me take all these off and then we'll take the valves out. So I decided we'll do one cylinder at a time so we don't avoid mixing up the valves or anything. I just like to put things back where they came from. So you can see this is cylinder number one and the valves on it are now loose, okay? So, there's what the exhaust valve looks like on number one. Nasty. No wonder it wasn't sealing. I mean, look at that. That is so much carbon deposit on there. So, I'm going to take this to the wire wheel, get all this junk off of there, and then we'll actually lap it into the seat. And there's what the seat looks like. Let's see if I can uh, show you guys what the seat looks like. See, it's supposed to be nice and shiny all the way around. Well, it's not nice and shiny. You can see how it's uh, kind of pitted, and we'll get all that junk out of there, lap them in, and uh, hopefully, this will take care of the problem for good. So let me go brush that valve out. So here's what a cleaner valve looks like. I got the stem cleaned up and the, uh, the head as much as possible here. No, uh, no big deposits. And now, I also went ahead and kind of scraped the carbon off of the uh, combustion chamber here out of the inside of the seat. You know, blow it all out. Now what we want to do is lap this valve in to improve the sealing quality. So what was happening initially while he was getting an intermittent misfire, when the engine's running, the valve is actually rotating in the seat. And, you know, considering how much carbon and crap there is on here, sometimes a little, you know, it would find a good spot where it would seal, you know, more or less decent, and then it would rotate a little bit and get on that, whatever, piece of crap, and it would stop sealing. So he had an intermittent misfire due to low compression. What we're going to use here is lapping paste. Now this stuff uh, looks like it's from the 1950s. I got it from 
uh, an old friend uh, who actually got me into motorcycling and uh, well I guess I kind of inherited this made in England it's lapping paste you have fine paste on one side Let's see if we can uh, pop this open that's what that looks like see it's just kind of a gritty sandy paste substance and on this side it's coarse it came out kind of as a <laughs> as a blob so usually I just use the fine well we could try the coarse but usually the fine paste does a decent job so all we need is a little bit right on the valve seat okay so you just kind of spread it on there don't need much now put the valve back in its seat like so and now we use a, a suitable tool there's this you know wooden dowel with a little hose on it just kind of stick it on there well, let's get that guy out and we kind of uh, rotate it while pushing it in so it just rubs into the seat like that okay and we just rotate it and rub once in a while you inspect it to see how shiny the the seat is getting and actually we can see already see an amazing improvement see how nice and even that ceiling surface is now so it doesn't take much it'll get the carbon right off of there and we don't need to remove much material that's why we don't even need to use the coarse compound the fine compound is good enough so that's it we just clean the valve lap it in and I'll do it all you know all the valves and I'll just show you how to reinstall the springs and we should be good to go <clears throat> So the valve seat surface is looking decent, but if you look at the valve, it's still really quite, quite pitted. So we're actually going to have to lap this more until all that pitting is gone. So I'm going to work it and then uh, show you what a good ceiling surface should look like. So the coarse valve lap is definitely doing its thing. You can see our valve is starting to become shiny on that ceiling uh, area. There's still some pitting. Uh, I mean, it's not going to be perfect. These valves have seen better days. But it doesn't mean this engine's not going to run right. It's just, uh, you know, small imperfections. And once it runs for a bit on the highway, it'll, uh, it'll get better. But see those pits right there? Not ideal. It's better over here. So I'm going to finish it off with some uh, fine lapping and move on with life. All right, valves are clean. Here's what they're supposed to sound like. It's a nice sealing valve there. So we're just doing the, the exhaust here. So now to put the springs back on. We need to support this side with something. I'll, I'll just use a rag. We'll put the head back down and then we'll work from that side. So now to reinstall the spring and the valve keepers. So we put the spring on. Now the tool, you put the second piece in here. And this is a, has a spring loaded tip on it. And what you do is you get the keepers ready, you put it on top here you know the cap and then the keepers you place like so now this tool supposedly all you need to do is put it in the middle and press it down Look at that, worked like a charm. See the keepers are back in. 
This is certainly easier with the head off the vehicle. So right there. Now guys in, let's let's try the next one. The spring is on. Cap is on. There's one keeper. And there's the second one right there. So it's kind of preloaded. Put our tool right in the middle there. And just press down. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see what happened here. Not much happened. Okay. Let's try again. So every time you gotta reset it. Make sure those keepers are in the right spot. And if, if they're not, start over. So there's that. You see the problem here, the valve actually went down since my rag wasn't well placed on the bottom here. Let me reposition that. Okay, let's try again. Right there. Now careful when you lift it back up. Make sure both keepers are in. So that guy right there. Sweet. Two down, six to go. Just for kicks, I took an intake valve out. I know you guys are going to say, why are you only laughing the exhaust valves? Well, here's what the intake valve looks like. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Look at that nice clean ceiling surface. So, obviously when the oil burns, it goes out the exhaust valve. That's why the deposits are on the backs of the exhaust valves. And the intakes, they're always cleaned by, you know, gasoline. There's no, they actually look really nice. And you know the seat, the seat looks fine too. So no reason to do extra work here. See that seat looks beautiful and shiny. So basically, just the exhaust valves. So here we have valves off of cylinder number two. Uh, and that one I cleaned. What was it? Ten thousand miles ago, or twenty thousand miles ago, when it initially had the misfire code. And it doesn't look any better than the valves on cylinder number one. That's that's kind of insane. So that's why we're doing them all. So it, I mean, you would think like, oh yeah, you know, just clean these so we can just do one and four. Nope. That's why our compression check was actually showed low compression on number three as well. So you can see uh, this problem is across the board here. So I'm lapping the number three valves here see a slight issue see that big pit right there and if you look at the edge of the valve real close it's almost like it's deformed because of that pit that kind of sucks well I don't have any spare valves on hand so I'm gonna lap this one in a little more and well They'll just have to seal. Well, I'll be damned. This, the other valve, on number three, also has that little defect in it. See right there, there's a pit, and it's kind of almost looks like it's bent right there at the pit. Again, hopefully, the, the lapping will make it seal good enough to make it last. Just thought I'd show you the process of cleaning one of the valves here. This is the last one. It's uh, well, <laughs> first I use a crappy knife to scrape off the really big chunks off the face and off of the uh, the stem itself.
dirty work, huh? Someone's gotta do it. To get the big chunks off. Then we're gonna go to our wire wheel over there. And this stuff actually produces quite a bit of dust, so no reason not to wear a little protection. That's right. Safety third. idea right so basically this whole process I thought I was just gonna lap the valves but cleaning the valves takes a lot more time so you can see the wire wheel does a pretty decent job but that stuff is baked on there hardcore a white crust from the from the oil but you know it's got to be done for the car to run well long term so I'm gonna finish this up install it probably call it a night <laughs> engine work <laughs> 